I hope all is well. We're back at it here this hour in our lead coming from the Rocky Mountains. And it seemed inevitable, and it has now happened. Uh, this is where the big news of the football news cycle comes from. Bronco country. One day, one day after the Christmas beheading in La La Land, the other shoe dropped in Denver. If you've not heard somehow, if you've missed it, we learned that Nathaniel Hackett was given his walking papers. Hey, gone, fired after the Christmas debacle during his first season as head coach of the Broncos. Denver goes just 4 and 11 in the failed tenure with Hackett on the sidelines. Years from now, future generations of Bronco fans will compare all coaches' tenures to Nathaniel Hackett, and uh, that's how bad it was. But he has now been sent on a long walk off a short pier. The clock management strategist, Jerry Rossberg, takes over as the interim coach the final couple games of the year. So let us discuss the question here. Did Nathaniel Hackett get a raw deal from the Broncos? Only 15 games, that's it. Of course, the answer to that is an obvious N plus O. No, he did not get a raw deal. I've got Better Business Bureau, Home Depot, and Tool Bag. And we will lock all of these things together, and we are going to make a halfway decent coach, which when was the last time, I guess, John Fox, when was the last time the Broncos had like a really like a really good coach? You probably got to go back further than that. It's been a long time. All right, so number one. Number one. Number one. Uh, Nathaniel Hackett wasn't the perfect job. Wasn't the perfect job. But Nathaniel Hackett was given a pretty good job. A bag of gold bars. An upstart team, a team that had made some big, sexy moves in the offseason. They picked up the franchise quarterback, Russell Wilson. And Hackett had been billed up as a savvy X's and O's kind of guy, proficient in offensive football. And he had turned to this Bronco team, which was supposed to be filled with the riches of Solomon, into a riches to rag story with him at the helm. And that's on Hackett. Now, we can rip Russell Wilson and go on and on, but a coach's job is to get the most out of the players. And Nathaniel Hackett had a failure to communicate with his quarterback and was unable to get anything out of Russell Wilson, although Russ did get a nice home in Colorado. Denver Brass, the people that hired him, George Patton, the GM there in particular, ought to call the Better Business Bureau because this is false advertising. For instance, the Broncos, they averaged 15.5 points per game in the Hackett era, the fewest, brace yourself, brace yourself, the fewest in the NFL this season. Worst in the NFL, in a league with the Chicago Bears and the Houston Texans, the Broncos were the caboose bringing up the back of the train as it goes around the mountain. And they're Yards per game, 316 yards per game, 26th in the NFL. And it's not for a lack of talent. It's not for ability at the playmaker positions. Even with a rat-kill performance on Sunday, the Broncos defensively, something Nathaniel Hackett knows nothing about. He's an offensive coach. Denver's defense, even with that dreadful performance in the hood in Inglewood, allowing the fifth-fewest yards per game in the NFL and tied for the sixth-fewest points allowed. Now, that performance against the Rams, if you were paying attention on Christmas, that is a classic vintage coach-killer performance. We normally see that in the NBA. You don't see that in football very often, but it happened, and we got to witness it. Tony Romo was there. Jim Nance was there. They were wearing their ugly Sweaters, they're ugly holiday sweaters. They got the whole ball of wax on Christmas there, but a low effort, lethargic, sleepwalking performance. The only fight that the Broncos showed was with each other when they were fighting on the sidelines with the offensive lineman disgusted with Russell Wilson. The backup quarterback comes over there and tries to to yell at the offensive lineman who then yelled back. That's the fight. The, the most fight the Broncos showed was Randy Gregory, I believe, after the game, punching 
a sucker punch to one of the Ram offensive linemen. And so th- that gets you fired there. Bye-bye. All right, see you later. Get out of here. All right, now, page two. What is the lesson from Nathaniel Hackett's failed tenure in Denver? So there's a lot of lessons that come out of this. It's a breach of football etiquette. George Payton, the GM there, hired Nathaniel Hackett because of, in large part, two reasons. Because of a dream and a rubber stamp. Don't be that guy. Don't be that guy. That's the lesson here, right? Don't be the guy. The Broncos had these wild dreams that they were getting Aaron Rodgers. They weren't supposed to get Russell Wilson. Relax. They thought they were getting Aaron Rodgers. At the time, he had a lady friend that lived in, in the you know, greater Denver area within a reasonable driving distance in Colorado. And Aaron Rodgers was having a hissy fit with the Green Bay Packers. And every indication was he was going to be traded and he was going to exit away from Green Bay and he was going to end up somewhere else. And so the Broncos had this wild pipe dream they were going to get Aaron Rodgers. And that was the plan. And so the GM, a man with the plan, they said Rodgers has a wandering eye. He was looking to leave Green Bay. Everything indicated he wanted out. Denver was ready to do the mating dance. The other factor here, and there's a lot of variables, but the other variable is that Aaron Rodgers gave his seal of approval. He rubber-stamped Nathaniel Hackett. He sang the praises of his ability to coach offensive football. He underwrote the move to hire Hackett as a head coach. Uh, clearly, Rodgers has been, you know, he was out drinking ayahuasca with Joe Rogan at the time, or I don't know, maybe he was sniffing glue. I don't know what he was doing. But either way, Rodgers endorsed that move. Maybe he just wanted to screw the Broncos over, but Hackett, who had been fired in Jacksonville, the dreadful Jags in his previous coaching stint, riding the coattails of Aaron Rodgers all the way to a head coaching job. What a boondoggle. And so it is a teachable moment that you do do your homework. I would also advise going down to Home Depot, buying a better shovel, that you should dig deeper, right? You should dig deeper. Now, here's how I relate. Years ago, working in radio, I was at a a radio outfit. They hired a guy who had a glowing resume. And one of the bosses loved to brag about, in in the radio business, it's all about the call letters. If you work in terrestrial radio and some big-time call letters on your resume, and there was one problem. They hired this guy, and he sucked eggs on the air. He was boring. He was dull. He couldn't provide an entertaining, compelling talk radio show. It's a problem. But they had massaged this guy's ego and built this guy up to be amazing when they hired him, and he was nothing short of terrible. But he had the resume, right? It's like, and it's it's the the, the coaching hire thing. It's such an inexact science. But so many teams in the NFL are so lazy; they just hire an assistant from whatever team's winning at that time, thinking that by osmosis. They're going to figure things out with their new team and all that, and they've got the pixie dust, and it's going to rub off, and they're all starry-eyed and all that nonsense. All right, final point. So I I saw uh, an interesting note, and the stat pointed out that Urban Meyer and Nathaniel Hackett, for all intents and purposes in the modern era of the NFL, are the two biggest turd burgers among recent coaching hires. I say recent, since the merger in terms of shortest tenure, failing to go the extra mile. So toss-up question here. Who's the more embarrassing hire? Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. We just saw that. That's fresh in our minds from last year. Or Nathaniel Hackett in the Mile High City. So I'm actually going to go with Hackett on this. I believe Hackett is more of an embarrassment than Urban Meyer. And let me make my elevator pitch as to why that is. All right. Urban Meyer took over a wretched franchise lacking elite professional football talent and a rookie greenhorn quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. Now, it is true that his arrogance got the best of him. He also got caught up with a co-ed at a bar in Ohio. That was embarrassing. He was pig-headed. He was a college coach. He ended up 2-11 and with Jacksonville. But Nathaniel Hackett is worse, and here's why. This guy is such a tool bag, but he's an NFL guy. He had NFL pedigree. He'd worked for multiple NFL teams. He knew the NFL business model. 
He didn't have any extracurricular activity that we know of. He inherited a team that had talent that everyone had said was a quarterback away. They went out and got the quarterback, and he was bad. He, he was bad at coaching. There's no other way to say it. Now, among the highlights for this, this Mama Luke, Nathaniel Hackett, this 64-yard field goal in Seattle to begin the year when everyone was watching instead of allowing Russell Wilson to try a fourth down and five with 20 seconds remaining in the, uh, the season opening game where they lost to the Seahawks. That set the tone. You only get a one chance at a first impression, uh, and Brandon McManus missed the kick. My favorite Nathaniel Hackett story, and the one I'll likely remember most about Nathaniel Hackett, was not even the Seattle game. I'll probably forget about that. But the first home game in Denver, you remember what happened? I remember what happened. The Broncos were having issues with the clock. They were having some issues with the clock management and so the Bronco fan base, led by Parker the Snow Dog, sarcastically counted down. I heard Parker barking. They were counting down the clock to give the Broncos the upper hand as they barely got by the NFL's worst team, the Houston Texans. They were counting down the clock for a professional football team because the coach was so bad at clock management. And then they had to hire somebody to keep an eye on Hackett, who now ends up becoming the, the head coach. So I say that Nathaniel Hackett, more embarrassing than Urban Meyer, considering that he had come from an NFL team, he knew how the, the business worked at the pro level, and he still had a team that, that was terrible. And the, the final crescendo... On Christmas Day, with, again, everyone in the NFL world watching, the team comes unglued. They look like they would rather be laying in a hospital bed somewhere than playing the Rams. The most fight they have is with each other. And a let's-get-the-coach-fired performance. That is why Nathaniel Hackett is more of a bum than Urban Meyer. And you say, well, there's no way that's possible. We just saw it. It just played out right now. The yeah, guy's a Hackett bum. He had, a, he had a better record, a little better record, but side by side, my vote goes to Hackett as the bigger stiff than Urban Meyer.